Thank you. Can you put it up there? Hell yeah. Don't fall. I'm not helping. I can help, actually. You good? All right, dope. What's up, y'all? Had a good day so far? Yeah, I love it. I've had some good feedback. Thank you. Who was the extra excited one? Hey, I love it. Should be up soon. I think you go next, don't you? I love it. So what I found weird is when coach asked who wanted to be great, like seven of y'all raised your hand. I was sitting out back and I'm like, dang, we should just wrap this up and go home. There's seven people who want to get really good. I was kind of offended for him. Um, what's funny is when we met, I do, I do a lot of events, obviously, for those that follow me. I go to a lot of stuff. I, I like meeting people. I like contributing, giving back and doing stuff like this. I was sitting back there going, I definitely, that night we met coach was a little crazy because we legit, he just walked up to me in the lobby and we go to another party, like a little pre-event thing. And then his like, y'all know, y'all know Mike, he's got Mike. He's like seven, two or something. He walks right up to me and he's like, coach told me to come talk to you. And we started talking at the bar and I was just trying to figure out who he was. I knew of him a little bit and like, literally like three hours later, me and Steph, we had this rental car in Dallas, and he's like, you want to go to a, a club? I guess it's a club. It's like a largest country bar. That's what it is in Dallas. And if any of y'all are from there, maybe you know what it is. I forget the name of it. It was massive. There were like five bars and line dancing everywhere. And literally, I got coached, and this seven-foot dude in, my back, in the back seat driving to some country bar in Dallas, and we stayed there till like four in the morning. And it was a rough night. It was a, the, the morning came quick. And... Uh, but I started thinking about it, and I'm like, that led to a lot of stuff. It's led to a lot of different relationships. I never would have expected it. I didn't go in there looking for anything. But during times like this, I just try to take advantage best I can of the opportunity to meet people. And you never know what comes from it. You know, I met Juanita at an event, Campert at an event, Tony Merwin at an event. Um, first time I met Tordowski was at a sales conference. I didn't know him prior to that. Um, the Starks who were going to speak, I met at an event, and they've from those conversations we've created great business relationships you know so a lot of y'all are here and you don't yet see how it's going to play out but some of the conversations you're having here if you're super intentional and stay in touch with people it can lead to business opportunities that you'll never see coming you know and it's led to recruiting that i don't even really try to do it's just led to opportunities and people are like hey i want to i want to come on board with what you're doing you know if you add value to people build relationships that's how i do a lot of the recruiting today Early on, I'm sure I was doing a lot of the same stuff y'all trying to do. You know, ask everybody, strangers, run ads, whatever it is, post on social. So it does get easier as you grow. What does that timer do? 56, 20, what, 56 minutes, 25 seconds? Yeah, okay. I'm like, it's counting up, not down. Cool, what do I go to? 25? Thank you, bro, appreciate it. Um, you know, so this thing does get easier. And you know, what I, what I wanna say is, again, take advantage of things like this, do advance, but meet people. Create relationships with people, add value to people's world, and great things come from it. And it's, it's led to some of the most amazing relationships we have today and, and, and doing business deals. Hell, we met through me, coach walking up to me and, a, and Yak. It's weird. You knew both of them, which was kind of funny. You know, now we're having a, an event at your place tomorrow, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to Houston. You know, from a dude who called me from a guy I met at an event. And hell, I met you like through a, like a networking thing from, uh, yeah. Yeah, just got connected on the phone and we reached out and two years later we started doing stuff together. You know, so it's, it's about being intentional and trying to work with good people, you know, so you guys have a great opportunity here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about like, I mean, a lot of people hear me talk about doing more and running more. Sean was talking about running high activity for 90 days. And I think Rob, I don't know if he's in here still, um, he, he mentioned him and I talking the other day. And the reason I wanted Sean to talk about simplifying this thing is I think a lot of folks overcomplicate this, myself included when I was new. And I thought I had to learn like a ton of stuff before I could see more people and make more phone calls. Or are any of you like you get an objection on the phone and then instead of calling more people, you stop dialing and you go watch videos on how to overcome that one objection. Right? Like how it's that's how productive is that really? You know, I'd rather you spend time getting more objections so you learn how to do it on the fly because the watching the video is not going to really teach you a ton. Because again, you've already seen the video and you get the objection, you start it over your face and then you go like, ah, let me stop and watch. And we do that with in-home stuff too. And not saying you shouldn't do trainings, 
What I always try to help people understand is if you put a lot of activity behind it first, the impact of that is much greater than all the BS stuff we do to make ourselves feel like we're trying to get better at our career. You know, meaning if you spent 20 hours seeing clients or 20 hours watching videos about seeing clients, which one's going to make you better at dealing with clients? Right? Actually seeing them. If you spent 20 hours on the phone getting beat up, or you spend 20 hours watching videos about phone script or role playing with your upline or any of that, like how effective is that really? It's zero. It, it's not real. It's not real life situation. You know, so the way we've built this thing is I've, I've learned to keep it really simple and just get 20 hours of the money making activity and you will learn everything you need to learn. And if you're willing to take the nose on the chin, like just get punched in the face, it's part of the deal. That, and by the way, that doesn't go away. We deal with stuff every day in my office. We always have issues. We always have problems. There's always something in the agency, you know, and it's it, learning to navigate difficult business situations is not going to go away no matter how much money you start making. In fact, they get bigger and they get more expensive, the problems, you know, and then they have to happen sometimes on the fly. We've changed, I don't know, six things here today on the fly. Just part of what we have to do. You know, and there's no video I could watch. There's no one I could talk to in advance to know this stuff was coming. You know, I could go back and be like, hey, coach, you run events. How, what do you do here? I'm like, hey, we just figure it out. You know, and I keep talking and we, we have a good day. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do an exercise with you. all I want you all to do an exercise and it could be dangerous because I'm going to ask you to do math. But I promise I'll keep it like third grade level. And if you can't do it, it's OK. Just like look at your neighbor or just tune out for a minute. I'm just going to go through like literally what helped me and I try to give this perspective to agents all the time um, because I want to I want I want perspective on the amount of activity y'all are doing relative to the income or the production or worse your expectations you know um, so again we're super super basic stuff and keep it as simple as possible don't overcomplicate this I'm going to like ask you to think of some average numbers based on your activity just write down the first thing that comes to mind. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't lie to yourself. Just put stuff down. Um, I may ask some of y'all to, I may ask someone about theirs. I'm going to do mine, actually. So when I was new, if we go like, and if you don't do exactly what we do, adjust slightly to make it make sense for you. But just use common sense here. Um, if we say like, how many clients do we sit with? Zoom with, talk to, present to, however y'all word them today. Like actual presentations. If I said, how many of those do you do on average every single week? If you how many clients do you sit with, like present selling insurance to? Think about what that number is. Whatever that, and don't like inflate it because that's what you did this week and you've never done it any other week. Like, what do you, if I took your average for the last 90 days, think about what that number is. Just write it down. How many people you sit? When I was new, a week, by the way, when I was new for my first about year, my number was 12. It's about how many, uh, hell, I lied. I'd schedule 12 and I'd sit about eight. It was about my normal number early on, okay? Now, if we go, how many phone calls do you make? A week on average, just write that number down. Mine was 150, maybe a week when I was newer. And then if we go, how many, how many recruiting conversations, calls do you have a week on average? Mine was probably six. And, I, and, and the thing where I want to help people understand, like one of the biggest mistakes I, or the kind of problems I see is if I ask, like, how many of y'all do this full time? I think this is your full time gig. Okay. And what do we consider? How many hours do we consider full time? really traditionally yeah anyone over 40s full-time i said yeah the minimum threshold meaning if you're working 12 hours not full-time it's part-time right so we go 40 if you work more you should work more especially if you're trying to build something big or get rich you know what i'm saying it's like everyone's here assumed to make money so like we should be willing to work 60 70 80 90 hours well a threshold normal everyday work is 40 hours is considered full-time so whatever your number is take your sits and just that's like when I sit, do you sell life insurance? You sit with clients? Yeah. Virtual or do you actually sit with them? 
Cool. How long is your average appointment that you like present to? Okay, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to round up to an hour and give you a little leeway here. It's going to benefit you. So if we go times one hour, that's really simple math, eight, and just circle that number. So you spend eight hours, me, sitting with clients. Does that make sense? Now, if I did, because I can do math easier, I'm going to make this 120. If I go 120 minutes, like when you make a phone call, if you called me once, how long does it take? Just once. 60 minutes to call me once? Yeah. No, just to call me one time. To dial my phone and let it ring. Okay. So if we go, this is 120 minutes, fair, of phone calls. Now, you, this is where the math gets tricky. You got to divide this by 60 to get hours. Does that make sense? That's two hours. Right? 120 minutes, 60, y'all get it. If you don't get it, look at your neighbor. And then recruiting calls. Do you do recruiting? Who does recruiting here? Anybody? Somebody. Click way back there. You do? You do recruit. How long is it? If you're recruiting me, how long is that conversation? Cool. I gave myself credit for 20 minutes because I was, again, trying to round up. So, again, it's 120 minutes. So it's two more hours. So, for me, when I was trying to figure out how to get really good at this, and I considered myself full time because I quit my job and this is all I did. And when I looked at this and I went eight hours seeing clients, two hours making phone calls, and two hours doing recruiting, I was working 12 hours a week actually making money. Now, I probably spent 10 hours a week listening to training calls, and I probably spent five hours a week calling carriers, looking for stuff, complaining about stuff, wondering stuff. I probably spent 10 hours a week sorting leads, reprinting them, flipping them upside down, taking notes on them, doing dumb stuff, right? All the stuff y'all do. And what changed my business is I said, I'm going to get to 40 hours doing these three things. If you can get to 40 hours doing these three things, like who had the biggest, give me someone like a big number. Y'all know if it's you. And if it's not you, you'll definitely know that too. But who had a high number here? Like sit with. Give me like a high number. Someone has a high, big, just yell it. 18? Anyone higher than 18? 35? Did you say 35? You're a beast, though, on. And I do know you, by the way. So 18? Even, I'll give you your 35, too. He's a machine. Here's the thing, though. How, how much did you issue this month? One. 178,000. You can work as little as you want, bro. Does that make sense? This exercise ain't for you. Fair? So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go the highest one. So we had 18, okay? Who has like a high dial number? Like give me a big, what's yours? 800, anybody higher than 800? Thousand? Cool, how many minutes is that? How many hours is that? Someone do that math. Thousand minutes, how many hours is that? Can y'all do it? Just divide it by 60, dude. 16? So 16 hours there. Who does recruiting? Who had a big number there? Recruiting conversations every week. Nobody had a number? Seven, eight a week? Anybody higher than eight a week? You don't count, Zach. Neither do you, Basso. Dude, you're rich. Get out of here. Eight? Anybody higher than eight? Nobody's higher than eight. How many hours is that? Two and a half? Okay. What's that total? 18 and 16, 34, 35. So if I took the highest number from each category and we built the ultimate agent robot from the three of you, you don't hit 40 hours. Yeah. And y'all want to get rich. <laughs> like, this is the conversation I had to have with myself and then go home and tell my wife, like, hey, babe, I know I said I wanted to get rich, but I'm working like 12 hours a week and I need to stop because it's not working. Now, if you're where you want to be financially, keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not, do you know the best phone script training on earth? Recruiting, I could, I could get Twardowski, Basso, anyone up here, all of them up here, and we could talk recruiting. And if you're talking to eight a week, you know what the answer will be? You'll never grow an agency for the rest of your life. 
in the history of time. It's fair. Talking to eight people a week, dude. And meaning everyone else in here that wants to build is less than that. Right? And we go 18. I, I ain't mad. Now, if you want, if you're okay with it, I'm not mad at anybody. But if you're like, I'm miserable where I'm at, I'm unhappy, I can't pay the bills I want to pay the, the way I want to pay them, I have to say no to my kids a lot, I can't take care of my parents the way I want to take care of them, you know, you go to the grocery store and you have to like pay attention to what you put in, put things back, pick out coupons, whatever piece you have to do. You have any of y'all swipe your card? Does this happen today? Like you swipe your card and you get nervous because you're not sure if it's going to go through? That feeling sucks, don't it? I didn't like it. But because I was working 12 hours a week, I kind of deserved it, you know? And building this agency, I just help people understand. And if you figure out what your money is, whatever your income is, you can do that number. And then just divide it by your average hours. A lot of y'all actually make really good money per hour. And you're actually relatively good at selling. But the level of effort is so low that the end result at the end of the month, there's no money left. You know, is at the beginning, you got to cover your leads and your personal expenses. And combined out of 150 people in here, we couldn't get to 40 hours. And I don't know any other way to make money, but seeing clients, making phone calls and recruiting people. All the other stuff y'all do, that should be how you get to your 90 hours. That's overtime. This here, I always say this to me was like going to night school and trying to get a better education for my career. <clears throat> you know? And so the only thing I did was start going, I'm going to, I wish I had an eraser, it's all right. I was going to schedule 30, sit with 20 a week here. So that's 20 hours. I was going to do 600 of these a week, which is 10 hours. And I was going to do 30 of these a week, which is another 10 hours. That's how I was going to get to my 40. And when I started doing this, my income tripled the first year I did it. Any of y'all be happy with triple your income? It wouldn't suck, would it? Be a good number, huh? And we know it's cool. You don't need no phone script training to do that. No training at all. Just do it. You can suck as much as you suck today. If you just did it more frequently and you were honest about yourself with how many hours you actually work in the activities that actually make money in this business, versus all the other stuff you're telling yourself are the reasons you aren't having success. The lead vendor sucks, this lead type, this area, my area, whoo, this area, those people, they just don't buy insurance in my area. You don't know my area. I'm like, shit, really? You convince, like, you're actually really good at sales if you convince yourself of this stuff, you convince yourself of and you believe it too. So y'all are actually amazing at sales. You know, and I had to look at it and go, I've convinced myself I can get rich on 20 hours. I must be really good. You know, and then I just went home and I changed everything. I literally changed my entire schedule. That's the only thing I did. My first year at FFL, I issued, I was like 12K a month kind of guy. And I had been in the business since 2012. So like um, almost two years at that point. Two and a half years at the end of 2014, I've been in the business and I'm issuing 12 grand a month, which means you make how much money, Zach? There's none left after leads and chargebacks and there's no money. You're broke. Fair? Right? We can all agree on that. 12 grand is not a big number, <laughs> especially when it's the issue paid number. Right? And then I did this and I got to 40 hours. The same dude, the same person running the same leads, just more of them, obviously making phone calls, same phone calls, same clients, same carriers, same products. I issued 460 in 2015. And the only thing I changed was I started working 40 hours a week. That's it. And I did it every single week and I never missed. I had a set schedule. Stephanie, thank goodness, handled everything else in my life. But she did it because I was willing to put in the work. So she was willing to put on the work on the other side. You know, so we sacrificed and we sat down and we said, I want to cheat because there were guys up here talking and then they had all kinds of dope stuff. And this thing isn't always all about the stuff, but the stuff don't suck. And I can do a lot of cool things with my kids today. The money don't suck. 
you can do a lot of you can have a lot of people with money. How much money? How much money we give away today? Anybody keep count? Yeah, 15, 20 G's are giveaway. Spent, I don't know, 40, 50 on the event. All the people that flew here to come. I was doing math in the back, and I'm like, I bet, I bet a couple hundred G's went into this event for everybody. If we took everybody that traveled, your flights, you know what I mean, your hotels, y'all stuff, every, you know what I mean? You can this this industry can get nuts for every single one of you. You all have the same ability and same access we have. The difference is we work harder. That's it. That's the only answer. Now, you know what was cool? When I started doing 40 hours a week, I got better too. Why? Because I wasn't fake studying. I was on the job learning. I was getting my face beat in 20 times a week, 30 times a week, banging on doors every week, doing recruiting calls when I didn't know how to do them. Getting told I'm an idiot. Why would they want to work with me? Who are you? Why are you calling me? What do you what comp can you offer me? What do you got? I had to go through that stage. But when you do it 40 hours a week for multiple years in a row, you get really good. And then you start selling a lot of insurance and you start making a bunch of money. And you about don't care if anyone works here and you don't care if a agent if a client buys or not. Like you want to help them. I want to help the client. But if they don't buy, I don't give a rip. If they're not worried about covering their spouse, I don't care. If they say I want to think about it, I get up and leave. How about that for overcoming objections? I want to think about it. Okay, have a good day. Where are you going? Dude, you want me to fight with you to protect your family over life insurance? Try saying that. It works. Because if, like, you, really? Like, you want to arm wrestle over whether or not you need to take care of your wife when you die. I'm not your guy to pitch on that. Now, should you have strategy? Obviously. Some of y'all been following me. You see my videos. I can give you strategy too. But what I've learned is the strategy does nothing for this guy. I can take the best objection overcomer in the room, the best phone guy in the room, the best in-home guy in the room. I can take all that. Give him 12 hours a week. And then put a mediocre guy over here and let him work 40 hours a week. Who's going to win? All day. All day. It's going to be more consistent. For sure. And then now building an agency, y'all are trying to overcomplicate it and teach all kinds of fancy stuff. Which again, I'm not saying don't learn stuff. Be clear. You should learn stuff. I'm just saying that shouldn't be the first priority. 40 hours a week should be. And if I can build an agency and go, hey, dude, can you work 40 hours a week, bro? Here's how it is. Now, if you don't, I'm not mad, but I got one rule. What is it, Steph? You can never complain to me because you're part time. Does that make sense? And the industry is going to be really inconsistent for the rest of time. It's going to suck. Always. Forever. Clear? If you work, if you do this, it's going to suck forever. Now, there's a, there might be a unicorn out there. One of y'all might be that runs 12 appointments and you, you home run. I ain't talking to you. Amen. High five. Love it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to teach it. I never did it that way. I didn't build that way. I'm not mad at that guy, but I'm not trying to teach that guy and build a business on that guy or girl, if you're here. Sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. You know, but I built this agency teaching people how to work 40 hours a week and skip all the other BS. We can train when you work 40. If you're not working 40, why do you need me? To, you want me to train you part time? Now, if you're part time on purpose, because you've got life going on, you got a job, this is your second thing, you're single mom, you got five kids, you got all this chaos, I'm in. But if you're broke, and this is all you do, I've learned that insurance agents count this as full time because it's their only job. That's most. I've asked this question at hundreds of conferences and events. The most common dictator is full time is this is all we do. But in any other world, any other job, any other career, full time is 40 hours. So if you guys can take that concept and put it in place here, I'm certain if you tripled your activity in your hours, I'm no math wizard, but I'm pretty good with a calculator. I'd probably triple my result by mistake. And y'all are trying to triple a result with some magical skill set. 
phone script. And, and if anyone's training on phone script and in-home, I apologize. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I am all about it, but to me, it's so secondary, you know, unless, again, case by case. You know? And that allowed us to build an agency now where 2014, you know, I was, again, personally selling about 12, 12 grand a month issuing. Our team for the year issued 180 grand for the year in 24, my team. I'm curious what this number is. I haven't done this math yet. 150, 155, 6, by 365. Holy crap, that's a big number. Let me make sure I did it right. Hold on. Divided by 365. Bro. Dude, we do 400 grand a day now. I never done that math, Zach. Are you still in here? Holy smokes. I mean, the last 12 months, we've done 155 million in issued premium. In 2014, I did 180 grand for the year. And all I've taught is working 40 hours a week. That's it. I teach nothing else. Anybody that's been, right, Wayne? Work more, bro. Do more. You know, y'all got the bracelets. One side says do more. I literally mean do more. Now, it means some cool stuff. I don't get time to do the whole presentation today. And then get shit done. I live by that. That's what my staff lives by. Like, what is their job? To get shit done. Every one of them. She's like the CEO of Get Shit Done. That was a director of Get Shit Done. The executive assistant of Get Shit Done. That's my office. That's their job. That's my job. And then when we get stuff done, what do I have them do? More of it. Ask any one of them. I live by this. And cool thing is you can make this applicable to any part of your life. You want to get healthier? Work out more. Eat more good food. You want a better marriage? Hang out with your wife more. Pay more attention. You know what I mean? Like this, these concepts can be true anywhere. And it's really easy. Yes, you can do that too. I'm not saying that. You can come up here and say it. What do you think she said? Better marriage. Do more what? That's what she said. I love it. <laughs> Steph, you hear that? You hear? <laughs> I've had fun with y'all. I appreciate it. That's all I got. Y'all have an awesome day.